I always get really excited when I find something historical when I'm outsourcing. It's even better yet when I find something historical that's worth a lot of money. Today we're showing you what 20 bucks bought me. Hey, it's Don. Today, I have a haul to show you. I paid 20 bucks for some stuff I've been after for quite some time. Um, it's historical. It's interesting. It's unique. These are from the 1870s, and these are tobacco-related collectibles. These are actually packs of cigarettes. These are the wrappers that go around them. It's a whole bunch of them dating back to the 1878 time frame. Most of them have seals and stamps on them to accurately date them to that time frame. Now, you may not think there's a ton of value in something like that. These are made to be discarded. Most people would have thrown these away back in the day. Who wants the wrapper from their cigarettes? I mean, in all honesty. So these are items that are basically utilitarian items, meant to be used and then disposed of. So there's not many of these left. So when you find something like that, it's truly a historical item because there's no precedent set to actually have somebody saving these and collecting these. Now, I mess with a lot of things like tobacco cards. So this is one of the things I almost never run into. They're very, very scarce. Some tobacco cards on their own can sell for thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. And so some of the empty packs, some of the wrappers from some of the ones that sell in those price ranges can go for some insane amounts of money. Now, I've talked about these types of items before. I have videos on like wax packs and things like that, wrappers from the trading cards. I also have a video on cigarette packs as well because some of these can sell for thousands of dollars now with historical items like this too i'm not really worried so much what it's worth because to me the history is worth far more sometimes than the true value of something now i'm going to slide over and we're going to show you some close-ups and talk about these for just a few minutes here and go over some of the values and the historical aspect of these now there's a ton of different makers and each maker made Dozens and dozens of different varieties trying to corner the market in a fancy name and image or something like that. Now these are by Kimball here, which is a fairly well-known one. Something interesting you see on stuff like this will not bite the tongue. Some of these had like a bad taste, I guess maybe the glue or the, the amount of stuff in the, the tobacco. I'm not really sure on that aspect of it. Um, this one actually won a prize at the 1880 World's Fair. So that's about the time frame from this one here. Uh, Vanity Fair, rather interesting. Genuine, again, this would be folded around. Now, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to mess the paper up. But this is the same stamp. This is just how it would be folded. The packs back then held a lot fewer, I believe five or ten if you were lucky on some of them. Interesting names and varieties will obviously do better, like this Midget Cigarettes one here. Rather unique, a small one. This one's missing part of it. It has the front and the two sides. Most of these I'll get at least 20 25 bucks a piece for, in all honesty. Some of these will go probably for $100 or better, um, depending on the one and the variety and the whole works. This one actually has a picture of one of the cigarettes on the outside. Again, very, very interesting. Most of them will have the name. That's the company name, Pollock. And then New York, the city that it was made. These are all real nice copies of it. Again, this is the facing of one. Some of these would go to like chewing tobacco too. It just depends. It doesn't necessarily have to be a cigarette pack to be in this stack here. Now, these came from a tobacco card collector's collection. Um, it was up for sale. I was able to get some of the items as well as these. These are far more interesting, in my opinion, than the actual cards themselves, which I did get a bunch of cards too. But the cards, though, they may be worth a lot more. They show up far more often than these wrappers and labels and things like that. So I'm far more interested in these um, from a historical aspect of it, as you can see. Anything tobacco sells, it's very highly collected, especially these 1870s and 80s labels like this. Rather, rather unique. This is actually cloth, uh, and it's probably like a plug tobacco or something along that line. This one's pretty interesting. A nice minor scene. Things like this can go for some incredibly good money. We've sold some other similar Eureka ones 
for in the $75 to $150 range. Now, some of these, there may be no known examples as well. So pricing is going to take me a little bit of time, but there's enough information online and boards and tobacco collector sites that I should be able to price these fairly easily. But just to give you an idea, again, I shouldn't get less than 20, 25 bucks for any one of these, regardless of the condition. And I have 20 bucks into the whole lot. So one of these will pretty much give me all my money back. There are some in here though, as I said, that will get us hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Now this is almost an arts and crafts. Nice Boston. That's just incredible engraving work there. Nice printer work on this one for sure. And this is another one by Marburg. Again, there's tons of different label names that you will find by the same companies. A lot of them will say like Havana or something like that, but they're actually from New York. Maybe some of the um, tobacco itself may have been imported, but just excellent examples. Some of them even still have the top label and things attached to them. Now, this one's really nice one, Durham, Blackwell & Co. That's a very well-known company. Uh, really interesting. The graphics on these are just incredible. History-wise, this is just as about as historical as you can get for the tobacco industry in general. This type of thing just doesn't show up, especially in quantity. Again, you can date it by these. This is an 1878 back of the book, B.O.B., from uh, the U.S. Uh, Revenues uh, series. So interesting one all the way around. Again, they have the top uh, design piece still stuck to it. Now, these are all used. Uh, chances are someone was collecting the cards and just saving wrappers from each card pack that he would have gotten. That's something people did at some point. Like if you bought Star Wars trading cards, you would probably want to keep a wrapper or two. This is the same basic principle here. Again, really, really nice ones, really interesting ones. This one's missing the back, I would gather. Maybe not. It's hard to say. Uh, rough or not, missing pieces or not, they still sell. Uh, this is like a tag on how you would open it, I do believe. Uh, rather interesting either way you go. You're just not going to find this stuff. So just love this. They've added on some other stickers after they've added on the label. They've got pure rice paper. Uh, it's gilt too. Some of these may have even been printed in Dresden, Germany uh, by the quality of the print. It's hard to say on some of these. Lone Jack here, as I said, it's another interesting one. Here's another Vanity Fair. They made a ton of different ones, Kimball. It was awarded at the 1876 World's Fair and the 1880. So this is probably around 1880, 81-ish, somewhere in that range. They wouldn't have promoted all of that so far past the event like that. So anyway, really nice one as well. This is Vetra. Now, I've run into many of these. Many people will find just this part cut out. People save these and put them in books, kind of like uh, matchbook covers, like from Box of Matches and things like that. This is a complete one, too. You can see part of where the stamp was probably underneath this here. You can see the size of this, too. They're, they're really small packs of cigarettes. I'll show you this one. It should be a give you a good idea on the size of these. They're all really small packs, and that was the standard. Now, these would have cost about 15 cents for 10 cigarettes back then in the 1870s and early 1880s. And you could have got two packs for 25 cents. That's the gist on pricing on those. This one's a little bit beat up. It's a Kenny Bros, which is Kenny Brothers. They've been one of the biggest ones for quite some time. That's a small size. It's got 10 cigarettes in there, as it says. Lone Fisherman, another Marburg, as I said, another one. This one would have been folded around as well. This is the whole thing. As you can see, because the stamp goes together on the back right there. This is just an add-on uh, sticker. This one's really nice graphics, too. The more graphical you find, usually the better they will do. So price-wise, uh, same thing with all of these. We're looking at at least 20 25 bucks, no matter what. Even if I just sold every one I got today for 20 bucks, I'd be making close to 1000 bucks, just at 20 bucks. Uh, I figured this $20 purchase should probably get us a couple grand back after everything is said and done, after the cogs are paid off and the whole works. Now here's another Vanity Fair. They changed the design once again. It's a constant thing. So you may find 10, 15 different designs that all say Vanity Fair. Now one question I get on stuff like that is what about the stamps? How much are the stamps worth? These stamps are worth like 10 cents if you're lucky. It's the piece itself that's carrying all the value here. Really nice ones as you can see. Now this one's really interesting. Love the little boy with the top hat. It almost reminds me of Alice in Wonderland with the Mad Hatter to some extent. This is the whole one too. Some of these packs may have only held five cigarettes. You could have bought cigarettes individually back in these days also, which I thought is quite interesting. Victoria, rather interesting one as well. Uh, I would imagine Queen Victoria. 
Uh, interesting piece. This one, obviously, you can see Louisiana Bell, and it doesn't necessarily mean, but uh, this one is from New Orleans. Uh, many times you'll see them, it'll mention a specific city or something, but it has nothing whatsoever to do with the city itself, which I think is kind of odd. Richmond Pure Rice Paper. Now, the rice paper was probably imported, uh, would be my guess. Maybe not, but uh, from what I would gather, it probably would have been. Now, this is an Allen & Ginter pack too. Allen and Ginter made a ton of valuable trade cards that they put in packs of cigarettes just like this in this exact same time frame. That's why, as I said, a lot of these are in this collection that I was able to get. Uh, Iron Duke, this is a real nice one too. This is some sort of tab, I would imagine. A closing piece here. Again, the names, the artwork are just fabulous. This is all, uh, some of it's lithoed, some of it actually is lithoed over uh, engraved images here. Now, this is another very well-known one by Kenny Bros also, and yet another one. This is Opera Puffs. Interesting name, interesting title. Will not stick to your lips. You know, it's kind of sad that they would put that in there, that someone would still want to smoke it if it burns your lips and, and things like that. Saliva proof, interesting stuff. Will not stick to your lips. The absence of moisture prevents the dissolution of nicotine, the spreading of the tobacco, and the melting of the rice paper. It's interesting stuff what they used to put on things like this. I have a few more here I thought I would show you out. This one is really interesting as well. Now, there's a chance that you may run into a stamp on one pack of something here, but these are all the same, very generic ones. Um, again, this would fold over like something along this line here would be my guess. That would be what you would see. This is probably the side, and this would probably be something along this line here. And then there's the top, just like that. So that gives you an idea. Now, some people, when they go to sell these, will make a new box for them, so they can sell it as like a box. I don't think I'll mess around with that, but you can kind of get the gist of how these uh, would go together and the size of the packs. Now, some of these two out of the collection actually have a uh, emptied cigarette in here. So you can see the printing even on the cigarette. That's almost impossible to find. It's not worth a fortune, but, you know, still it's pretty neat. More Vanity Fair. Another one with the, the cigarette paper, too. This is Drawing Room. Uh, it's rather interesting. It's a fantasy image on there. Small pack again. They're really artful considering what you see cigarette packs today. Uh, again, the values here. Now, these ones I'm showing you here are probably worth around 40 or better with uh, the paper and the add-ons and stuff you see. This would wrap around the top as you fold it also. Now, this is Prince Albert. I'm sure everybody's heard the joke, do you have Prince Albert in a can? Uh, it's the same one, basically. This is early. It has probably nothing to do with England or, or the prince in general. It's just they're using the word, the naming. Uh, that was basically like uh, theft for advertising purposes. Uh, another one, Three Kings, rather interesting one. Turkish. You'll see that a lot while they use that. And Kimball's is a very well-known one, too. They have a ton of cards out there, too. Here's another really fine one, Stephanie. Uh, let's put this together. You can see the size of this one here. Now, this one also has a glass mouthpiece attached to it. This one's pretty nice, too. This is My Uncle Toby. This is fairly scarce. Uh, some of these, as I said, there may be no known examples outside of a museum or in a book or something, too. This is New Orleans as well. A very nice one. And a wrapper or a uh, emptied cigarette also. You can see the date on it, 1878 over here as well. So rather interesting. Now, this one's quite unique. I'm not really sure what this is. It actually looks like a piece of plastic or something like that. I'm guessing this may have been slid into the pack at some point. I've got a wrapper, and I've got the whole thing. This one was probably a long uh, cigarette. You can see it's a totally different size container for this one here. So size and shape, they tried to make unique and draw interest to theirs over other people. Now, some of these mention without paper. Now, I believe that was rolled in a tobacco leaf. So it's like a mini cigarello or a mini cigar, something like that. And it says Havana, obviously not made in Havana. They're just using the name again. Here's a really nice one. This is a different size of box, as you can see, and it would be put together like this. These are straight cut number two. Um, just another nice example here. This is fairly unique. These larger ones like this might go for a few hundred bucks for some of these. 
Now this one's for cut plug tobacco chewing or smoking. So this is like a bag. This would have been mounted onto the side of a bag. Bright cut, another interesting one for pipes and cigarettes. So this again would be like loose tobacco. Uh, and it's talking about how healthy it is and the whole works. I don't know how well you can see it. It's not injurious to health. Nicotine extracted by patent process, therefore, will not injure the throat or bite the tongue. So, again, the nicotine on some of these was horrendously awful from all of the reading I've done on these. History, though, is the main drawing point for stuff like this to me. Even if they don't sell for a bunch, I'm really excited to find something from this age, this day, this uniqueness, and this scarce. Now, one thing people assume that if something scarce or never shows up or hardly ever shows up, that it must be worth a lot of money. That's not the case. Value doesn't necessarily go by the scarcity. It goes by how many people actually want the item. Something could be super scarce, maybe one or two of them in all of existence, but no one wants it, so it won't sell for any money. Now, I've just picked out some select ones to show you, but 20 bucks into this purchase. This is the leftovers. The person I bought this from only cared about the cards. These were junk to him because the cards were where he saw all the value in. But anything like this, paper advertisements in general, will always get you some good money. If it's old enough, if it's something that's meant to be a utilitarian item, meant to be disposed of, because again, no one saved them. Hence, they just don't show up very often. But that's what I have for you today. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. So get the charcoal filter with a taste worth fighting for. Join the unswitchables. Smoke Tarryton. Us Tarryton smokers would rather fight than switch. Tarryton from the American Tobacco Company.